Hello and welcome to the Robert J. Hermiller Her Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glandorf High School for today's matchup between the Tiffin Columbia Tornadoes and the Wayne Trace Raiders. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Mark Bagley. And Mark, we're in line for an excellent matchup today against two teams that have kids who can just flat out score. We do. We got Division I Columbian and Division Three Wayne Trace. Two kids averaging 20 points a game and Logan Beeston and Brooks Lockhoff. It should be an outstanding matchup, Nate. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first with the Tiffin Columbian Tornadoes. First for them, they've got size advantage. they got to rebound and run and get out in transition. Number two, they got a team rebound both ends. And then number three, one-on-one. Wayne Trace likes to drive and dish. you got to be better than their man, one-on-one. -on -one. And what do the Raiders need to do to come away with the victory? For the Raiders tonight, they gotta, they got to have pressure defense in the half court. Multiple defenses we'll see tonight from Wayne Trace. Number two, rebound and run on both ends. And where is the beast and where are the brothers? The big three for Tiffin Columbian. you got to stop those three tonight. It is the 2023 OG Winter Classic. When we return, we'll have the starters and opening tip right here on WOSN. Welcome back to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glandorf. We are underway in the 2023 OG Winter Classic. Tiffin Columbian with the basketball. We'll take a look at tonight's starters. Starting first with the Tornadoes, they're going to start number one, Zach Shawberry. Number two, Bryce Rogau. Number three, Braden Rogau. Number 22, Isaac Garcia. And number 31, Logan Beeston. As the first basket goes in, this one was uh, scored by number 22, Isaac Garcia, as the Tornadoes have the early 2-0 lead. Looks like uh, Columbia's coming out in a little bit of zone here, Trap. Right to the basket. That one is off. And we're going to have our first whistle of the night. See who they call this one on. As, as we are not with Glandorf, there are, sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge to see underneath the basket. As it looked like the foul was going to get called. Maybe it was just an out of bounds as the basketball stayed with Wayne Trace. Three point shot on its way. That one, someone must have got a piece of it, but a great heads up play by Tyler Davis as he was able to put that one in for two. Yeah, and good offensive rebound. The size of Columbia has affected Wayne Trace. Two block shots early. Wayne Trace starting the game in a 3 2 zone, it looks like. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Raiders of Wayne Trace. They're starting number three, Hudson Myers. Number five, Tanner Lockoff. Number 20, Brooks Lockoff. Number 24, Tyler Davis. And number 40, Kyle Stoller. Wayne Trace comes up with the basketball. As Brooks Lockoff, the 1,000-point scorer for Wayne Trace, brings it up for the Raiders. Yeah, and both teams have two 20-point scorers. It'll be interesting how those play against each other. Rogal gets into the lane, goes reverse on the opposite side of the basket, able to get that one up for two. As the Tornadoes retake the lead on the Layfeld Industrial Scoreboard. That was a steal and layup turnover there for Tiffin Columbian. The really pressure the guards hard out front. Tyler Davis gets down into the corner to Myers. He goes baseline. Tornadoes get their hands on that one as it ends up out of bounds. And you can see early on a lot of tips, a lot of deflections, a lot of block shots for Columbia. Their length is going to be an issue for Wayne Trace all night long. Wayne Trace inbounds the basketball, ends up up top to Brooks Lockoff. He lets the three-pointer go. No good. Stoller with the rebound and the putback. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Garcia. So here comes Beeston, Logan Beeston, the all-time leading scorer in Colombian history. Uh, he reached that mark last weekend against Anthony Davis. 
or Anthony Wayne, excuse me, not the NBA player, Anthony Davis, Anthony Wayne, as he now has almost 1,500 career points. Shot is short as Zach Shawberry tried to get that one up on a finger roll but couldn't get it to go. And early on, Wayne Trace has controlled the board 6-2. Uh, despite their size disadvantage, they've done a good job rebounding the basketball. It's real offensive, Nate. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to see Wayne Trace this year, and Kyle Stoller does such a good job underneath. So does Ty Tyler Davis. They just do, they know how to get themselves in position as they were trying to feed Stoller right there. But it really helps as they, they try to maximize their size. They usually are undersized when they play teams. They don't have a lot of height. But when they can get those fundamentals down, you know, they still put themselves in good positions for rebounds. Yeah, and tonight's game, no matter what happens, Nate, is a great tournament test for them. They're playing a big school, Division I. Teams they wouldn't see in the tournament run they, they, they'll have, and this is a great tournament-type game for them. 421 left to go here in the opening quarter as Columbian still has the two-point advantage. They're on south 4-2. to two. Works lock off. Works around the screen. Thought about the drive, takes a step back, three-pointer on its way, and good. Fox, Brooks Lockoff with a big three-pointer, puts Wayne Trace on top. He used the high ball screen and did an incredible job of pulling it back. That's a skill-level play, Nate, where he's practiced over and over and over. Nice feed by Beeston down low as Rogau is able to get two points in. And that's the soft part of a 3-2 of a zone is the bottom uh, – you know, block, and they screened it and ran a nice play. Another three-pointer. This one's good as Tanner Lockoff gets a three-point shot up. And they tried to go down low. This one's picked off. Wayne Trace comes up with a turnover. Brooks Lockoff gets down into the corner. It's Kale Winnens as he is checked into the game for the Raiders. Drops it off to Davis. Davis feeds Stoller. He's going to work. Spins into the lane. Hesitation move off the glass and in. And you called it, Nate. He hesitated just a bit to get him himself grounded again and really made a nice finish there. Four-point lead for the Raiders as the offenses are starting to get a little bit more comfortable here in the early going. Gooding gets it over to Beeston. Beeston down low, quick pass down to the corner. Three-point shot up. That one's going to be long. Fight for the loose ball ends up into the hands of the Tornadoes. That's that backside war right there, and that time Tiffin Columbia won the backside war. Beeston held scoreless here in the early going. Trying to facilitate right now, as right now Wayne Trace is doing a great job in the passing lanes, getting their hands on those basketballs, and you see another deflection go out of bounds. And lots of subs early on to try to get used to a, a, a middle-of-the-day game, um, you know, at a different gym, a smaller gym floor, a high school floor versus the college floor. A lot of things they're getting adjusted to, and both teams will. 2.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. As their Tornado's offense trying to get something going against this zone from the Raiders. And against the 3-2 zone, you got to attack the elbows and look middle. That's what they did right there. Nice catch and shoot that time by Shawberry as he gets on the scoreboard for the first time. They're four for five from two-point range early in this game, and here comes the pressure. Brady Miller hands it off to Lockoff. Lockoff works around midcourt. Hands it off to Winnens. Now they're going to reset. Raiders are trying to get to the inside, but Tiffin Columbia cut him off. As you see Brooks Lockoff try to drive. He had that one rejected. Now here comes Beeston. Feeds down into the corner. Three-point shot is long. Right now, Tiffin Columbian just can't quite get the feel for the three-point shot. Now yeah, they're two for six early on. Lockoff almost lost that on the handoff, but able to gather it back in. And when number 15, Winans, comes to the game, he's a spot shooter, and look for him to get his feet set when they help off of him. There was Winans getting it over to Lockoff. Lockoff pulls up for three one more time and gets it to go. And when Brooke Lockoff gets hot, he can score in bunches. Tiffin Columbia is going to want to mark him. Beeston lets it go. His first shot, and he answers with a big three-pointer. And both uh, the best players right now, 20-point-per-game scores are getting comfortable. 13-11. to 11. Wayne Trace on top. This one's stolen. As Winans is going to get called for the foul, it'll be his first. Kale Winans was trying to reach in and take that one away, but too much contact. That's a good foul. In the NBA, that, that's going to be a clear path violation, but in the high school, that's going to be side out of bounds, and that, that prevented a layup. So that was a good foul by Winans there. 
Been a pretty clean game so far. That was our first foul of the game. And we are under a minute to go here in the quarter. Yeah, both teams have two turnovers, so that hasn't been an issue. And they just haven't shot the ball real well yet, but they're starting to heat up and getting used to this gym. Gooding feeds Garcia down low. Garcia kicks it back out. Tried to go on the dribble drive, had him taken away, but Garcia able to gather it back in. And the, the Rogal brothers, you can see they've played a lot together. They screen for each other, they, they feed off each other. I guess that's what happens when you're uh, twin brothers. So now Tiffany Columbian going to pull it back out, under 30 left to go. And they're going to, looks like, try to take the last shot here of the quarter. Yeah, look for a high ball screen coming off the corner uh, and try to get um, some, some action in the ball side corner. Wayne Trace on top, 13 to 11 on the Layfield Industrial Welding Supply scoreboard. It's Tiffin Columbian trying to tie it up here going into the second. Final four seconds. Nice feed to Garcia. He gets the layup off before the end of the quarter, and we will be tied at 13 heading into the second. Columbian and Wayne Trace have played a fast-paced, exciting game here in the first quarter. We'll be back with the second on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. So nice play at the end of that first quarter by Tiffin Columbian as they fed Braden Rogow down low as he was able to tie this one up at 13. That was an excellent play. Uh, Garcia got downhill and made a really nice jump stop bounce pass to the backside. That's, that's really fundamental basketball. Wayne Trace begins with the basketball here in the second. They're now face guarding uh, Lockoff, at least trying to face guard him. Stoller works down low, a couple of hesitation moves. He gets fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. And that was a great play by Wayne Trace. They noticed what happened there by the face guard of Lockoff and got the ball down to Stoller, and, and he did a really good job of pump faking, and we're shooting our two first two free throws. Zach Shawberry was whistled for that foul. It was his first, team's first. Kyle Stoller's first free throw is up and good. Stoller now with three points on the night. He's a 14-8 guy, 14 points, eight rebounds, and he has to have every bit of that tonight against the size of Tiffin Columbia. Second free throw is good. Wayne Trace back on top, 15-13 here in the second. They're going triangle and two now, Nate. They got, th they got two guys in the block, one guy on top, and they're face guarding. Rogal and also Beeston. Beeston so far, a quiet night, been mostly a facilitator here in the early going. He just has three points. Nice spin move by Gooding. Can't get that one to go. Stoller went up high, was able to get that one. Went on the floor. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. He's limping a little bit here. We'll see if he can run that off. Lockoff now gets it into the hands of Tanner Lockoff over to Myers and back over to Brooks Lockoff. Lockoff's coming back to the top here for a three. There he goes. You called it. Three-pointer is good as Brooks Lockoff now has three three-pointers and nine points here in the half. And Wayne Trace is four of eight overall. You can see the action, a little scissors action on top. He's coming right back to the top, and they didn't chase that one. He got, he got his feet set. Nice play. Long pass over to Gooding. So he feeds it back to Shawberry. And Tiffin Columbian right now pretty comfortable moving the ball around the perimeter, but a nice job by Wayne Trace to get in there, poke that one away. Three-pointer on its way by Myers as he can't connect. Rebound ends up into the hands of the Tornadoes. Beeston. Going to work through the screen, down into the corner, has to get out of a double team. He's just looking for a little bit of help. Tries to get into the air and bounce it off of Wayne Trace player, but doesn't get it off enough, and that's going to lead to a run out and two more points for Wayne Trace. And they've done a really good job on Beast, and it, Myers is outsized, but he has done a great job of face guarding and causing havoc. There's a several inches difference there between those, and that's when they have to go in the post with that and knock him down into the post. Wayne Trace able to expand their lead. Now the largest of the game at seven as Davis almost got his hands on that one, but ends up getting fed down low to Braden Rogal. And he's able to get that one in for two, and we will have a timeout on the floor. 
It's going to be a full timeout, so we'll step aside as well. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back. Where will your team land in the brackets? And what does their road to Columbus look like? Get the most in-depth analysis and hear from coaches this Wednesday night at 9 p.m. The WOSN Selection Show presented by Layfield Welding and Industrial Supplies only on WOSN Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Taking a look at the Columbian Tornadoes. They are coached by Travis Kinn. Having a pretty good season, 14-4, 7-3 in the conference as they play out of the Sandusky Bay Conference. And for Wayne Trace, coached by longtime coach Jim Linder, they're off to a good start as well in the Green Meadows Conference, 4-2 conference play, 13-5 overall. And we'll probably talk a little bit later into the game as you saw a, a new kind of graphic and a new stat that goes up there, and that's that Martin RPI, which is going to come big into play uh, come tournament selection time, which is tomorrow. Yeah, they've gone to the computer rankings uh, this year, and with and Northwest District is the guinea pig, so to speak, to do that. And we'll see how that all plays. The difference this year, though, is the top four teams can pass. That hasn't been the case for a long time. So coming out of the timeout, Wayne Trace turns the basketball over. Five minutes left to go here in the first half. Beeston up top. Lions all over him. He's going to reach around. They'll get a little bit too much contact. He'll pick up his second foul. Yeah, and Winans is, is really uh, outsized on this. And then, and then when he drove, there were three guys standing right there in that triangle. And, you know, this is the kind of defense you may face in tournament when, when there, there's more scouting and those kind of things. And Wayne Trace has done a good job with that defense here early second period. Long pass inbound. Ends up into the hands of Rogal. He drops it off to Garcia. And then Shawberry's going to come up. They don't hold on to the basketball very long. They're very quick with their passes. And you see right there, Stoller goes flying by. Shawberry able to get that one to go for two. And that was a really good shot fake and go uh, by, by Shawberry. He's a nice looking athlete. And he, he really, he's got to make him pay for playing a triangle two. It's a junk defense. And, and when that happens, they've got to make him pay. Here's Tanner Lockoff. Looking up top, drops it off to Brooks. Here comes the flare screen. Back over to lock off. Brooks lets this one go. That's his fourth three-pointer of the game. They're really doing a great job executing their sets right now and getting lock off open. Different side, same result for Brooks. Lock off. And Shawberry tries to answer. That one's off the front of the rim. It's going to be rebounded by the Tornadoes. Drop back off to Rogal not able to connect on that one. And Brooks lock off comes up with the rebound. Brooks thinks about driving, pulls up, and hits. Brooke locks off right now. He can score in bunches, as we mentioned earlier. He is an elite scorer, and he's showing you why right now. That was another skill level play. He went behind the back, went backwards, created space, and the lost start, the pull-up jump shot. And then a steal by him. Lost his dribble that time, but actually ended up working out in his benefit. And then the nice spin move on the reverse gets two more. And that's going to lead to a Tornado's timeout. Wayne Trace has expanded their lead to double digits. They're on top, 27-17. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court. Take a look at the Week 3 state rankings. Defiance number 5, Ottawa Glendorf, Liberty Benton, Spencerville all ranked. Ottawa Glendorf the highest there at number 5. And then Division 4, as always, lots of ranked teams from this area. Jackson Center, Crestview, Rushi, Marion Local, Patrick Henry, and a lot of other teams that aren't ranked, but a lot of teams don't want to see come tournament time. Yeah, in the game of the year, in my opinion, Northwest Ohio is here next Friday night. Uh, Defiance travels at Otto Glendor for the most likely WL championship. Yeah, Defiance team, senior laden, seven seniors on the team. All of them play significant roles. It's been a long time since we've seen a team um, in this area that starts five seniors and that their major role players off the bench are also seniors. That team has been a lot of fun coming up. And then Ottawa Glendorf, Colin White, and everything they have, they actually have the game um, after this one here at the Winter Classic. A big win last night against Shawnee to stay undefeated in the WBL. And that is going to be one heck of a matchup here at the Supreme Court next Friday night. Yes, it is. And this place will be rocking for sure. Kyle Stoller hands off. Ends up in the hands of Tyler Davis. He tries to lob it down low, but Stoller not able to collect it as it goes out of bounds. And that's a fundamental play in high school basketball. A straight line pass from the, from the top into the post is almost impossible. You have to get a better angle by reversing the ball one more time and then, then shot fake and bounce pass in. So that's just a learning lesson there uh, from Wayne Trace. 
Under three left to go here in the first half. There's Wayne Trace with that 10-point lead. They're staying in that triangle, too, and they got to get the, their, their uh, post players in the block against this. And other players have to hit shots, too. Three-point shot on its way. This one, it's good. As the Tornadoes had not had a lot of luck from behind the arc, but Brady Gooding able to get the first one to go. And that, they're two of six now for the line. And the turnover run out by Garcia as Garcia gets two more. And just like that, it's down to a five-point game. Quick run off the timeout. They're now eight for 11, Nate, from two. So they've been very effective from two this game. Tanner Lockoff brings it down, has to get rid of it. Here's Brooks Lockoff. He has done most of the heavy lifting on the offensive end. Is, whether it's been on the inside or the outside, he hasn't missed much tonight. And they put Garcia a little bit smaller on him. You see, Coach Linder didn't like the set that time, so he's going to take a quick 30-second timeout just to try to get things reset as we come towards the end here of, these, of the first half. Brooks Lockoff, as you can see, the leading scorer tonight, 16 points as he has four three-pointers. And he doesn't need a lot of space, but he's so good at creating it. And then when he gets it, it's not too often we see him miss. No, his change of speed is impressive off the dribble. But when his feet are ready on the three, and he does a great job of foot organization, it's money tonight. And he's been really good in this first half. Wayne Trace did a nice job on the defensive end as well. You know, we were talking prior to coming on the air. You know, we, you expected to see quite a few different defenses and adjustments from Coach Linder as you, to throw at this Tiffin Columbian team, especially depending on how they wanted to try to lock down Beeston. So far, we've seen that. He switched things up. He's put different people on him. And Beeston right now, just with the uh, three points, I believe, tonight, and that's, that's a big feat as we reach towards the end here of the first half. Yeah, he hadn't got many shots because of the way they're fit guarding him, but also their execution hadn't been great either. Stoller was trying to get it off to Brooks Lockoff, but sides to try to keep it himself. Can't get that one to go as it goes off the side of the rim. As the Tornadoes now bring it up. Minute 40 left to go in the half. Still in that uh, triangle too. Gooding was trying to go down low to Bryce Rogal, but not able to connect, able to gather it back in. And they're going to reset and try again. There's a lot of standing going on for Columbia right now. they got to get a player and ball movement. There it is right there. Nice feed. But Gooding can't finish. Rebound comes down to Stoller. And able to get it into the hands of Brooks Lockoff. He has a double team comes over. Has to go high as Winans able to gather that one in. Winans, three-point shot is good. And that's what he does right there. He got his feet set and knocked it down. That's... Uh, six three-pointers, Nate, in the first half here for Wayne Trace and got that lead out to eight again. And I think the key story, too, besides their defense has been the way they rebound the ball. It's 10-6 right now, Wayne Trace. Here's Bryce Rowdow trying to find Beeston running that baseline. Ends up out of bounds, last touch by the Raiders. And again, when you're being face guarded, you got one of two things, go back door there. It was a, it was a bad pass or get back screened. And, and right now, they got to get more player and ball movement uh, Tiff and Columbia does to get back in this game a little closer. Hudson Myers checking back into the game for Wayne Trace. Quick three-pointer by Gooding. He connects. So back-to-back three-pointers by Brady Gooding after it seemed like the Tornadoes couldn't buy a three-point basket, and that makes it a five-point game. He's given a spark off the bench, and, and here we are, two-point possession game here late second. It feels like Wayne Trace has dominated. Brooks Lockoff working around the perimeter, trying to see if he can't find a lane, trying to get a clear out as Garcia goes out to guard. 18 seconds left to go. Trying to change the direction, couldn't get much going. Tyler Davis has to give the quick pass over to Hudson. Hudson Myers trying to find somebody to go with it, ends up in the hands of Lockoff one more time. Not a lot of space as Brooks Lockoff cannot connect, and that will bring the first half to a close. Wayne Trace has the five-point lead heading into the locker room as they lead 30-25 to 25 over the Colombian Tornadoes. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court. The OG Winter Classic second half underway as the Tiffin Colombian Tornadoes take on the Wayne Trace Raiders. I'm Nick Garlock alongside Mark Bagley. Mark, we were talking about it there at halftime. Fast-paced game. Both offenses were really uh, firing at all cylinders. Yeah, both teams shot over 50%. Not many free throws, only two. Not many turnovers. Rebounds were, were fairly even. Uh, it was a well-played first half. And Wayne Trace just executed a little bit better offense. We got their best player going. Logan Beeston 
that we haven't heard much from in that first half. Long pass down into the corner. Isaac Garcia gets the scoring going. He hits a three-point shot to make it a two-point game. He's played a really nice four game. He's passed the ball well. He just hit a shot there. He's guarding Lockoff right now, uh, face guarding him. So he's had an excellent four game tonight. Here's Stoller with the entry pass. Hands it off to Myers. Myers feeds Dave, or Davis, excuse me, feeds Stoller down low. A little bit of a hesitation there, but Stoller can't get it. Goes out of bounds. Last touched by Tiffin Columbian, so it'll stay with the Raiders. You know, this is only a two-point game. We were talking about Logan Beeston. He was very quiet, only three points in that first half. If you're Tiffin Columbian, you have to be pretty happy with how his offense is working and the fact that it's just a one-possession game, and he has yet to really get the field. Yeah, they were down 10, and he came out of that timeout, went five straight. Other guys have now hit shots. They've hit a couple threes, a two. Now it's down to a two-point game, and Wayne Trace just threw it away. Mental mistake that time as Brooks Lonkoff was trying to pass it over to Tyler Davis. He thought he was going to try to cut in and ends up for an easy turnover for Columbia. Wayne Trace started in that 3-2 zone. Now they've gone to triangle and two uh, for all of the second quarter. They'll start the third. We'll see if Beeson can get going here a little bit. So down into the corner. Shawberry looks for somewhere to go with the basketball. Guarded by Stoller. Shawberry gets it up top. Tight defense by Hudson Meyer. Beeston gets around. Went right into a double team. Has to get rid of it. Here's Garcia. He's going to go baseline underneath the basket. Trying to fight through a couple of Raider defenders. Gets rid of it. And when you drive baseline, you have to have someone in the backside corner. That's impossible to defend. And, and uh, Columbian had no one in the backside corner, so he got stuck. So here's Beeston once again. Found with real tight defense, Hudson Myers chases him back out around midcourt. And there's always two players on him. When he drives, there's always somebody else standing right there besides the face guard. Shawberry lets the three-point shot go. This one's good, and we have a whistle. It's going to be an offensive foul. The field goal will be good, but a whistle will come. So the role players have made threes. Shawbury hit one, Garcia hit one off the bench. We had one, so that's nine points of bonus basketball uh, for Columbia. And just like that, they're ahead. They, they've gone on a, a run here that they're up one now. Tanner Lockoff, he goes for the drive, kicks it back out. Davis, he sends a shot up. That one's no good. Able to chase down the long rebound, but not before his foot touched out of bounds. So it's going to go back to the Tornadoes. And that's an impressive uh, patience and poise by Columbia because you don't see a lot of triangle and twos, and, and they've kind of figured it out with role players hitting shots. Shawberry calls for it again, ends up with the basketball, but he's just going to hand it off to Garcia. Garcia sends him through as they're trying to isolate Beeston down low. Shawberry with the drive, gets it up high off the glass and in. And that possession, Wayne Trace went straight man. They went right at him then out of that man-to-man -man defense. So it's been a while since Wayne Trace has been able to score. Brooks Lockoff with the basketball looking to change that. They went from up 10 to down three, and that just shows you uh, how good Columbian is, and, and we'll see how Wayne Trace responds here. Lockoff, he's going to drive into the lane with the right hand. That one rattles around and in. There's that change of pace that we've seen tonight. Tornadoes move quickly. Ends up with Rogal. Rogal gets it over to Beeston. He once again gets cut off by two defenders, so has to get rid of it. Garcia throws it away right into the arms of Brooks Lockoff. 4.30 left to go in the third. Lockoff, step back, thought about the jumper for a second. Gets it over to Stoller, and they're going to reset. Now he's going to drive. Has it swatted away by Garcia, gathers it back in. Stoller going to let the three-pointer go, and this one is good. And that whole action got started, Nate, by a high ball screen. The two best players involved. It's hard to guard that, and the ball came back to Stoller for the three. Shawberry lets another three-pointer go. No good. Beast in there with the putback. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to go to the free-throw line. And when you're – he's not really struggling because he hadn't shot much. When you're not scoring, though, the best way to score is get a layup or get free throws. That's what he's doing right now. Sometimes it's about creating your own shot, especially when the defense is focusing on you. That's what he tried to do there. First free throw. Up and good. 
So Beeson with his first point since early there in the first quarter. He's going to the University of uh, Hillsdale, Michigan, a Division II school, a really good program, They're having a great year this year. And so that's a really good uh, situation for him to go into at Northwest Ohio. Beeson now trying to see if he can't tie it up with this free throw. And he does. You can tell he's got a clean shot, great rotation. He, he, he's really, you can tell he's a smooth player. And, and he may go off here the last four minutes of the third quarter. We'll have to watch and see what happens. Each offense has gone on a little bit of a run here in the third quarter, but we are back to being all tied up. 35 all. This one gets knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Raiders. And you can see right now offensively, Wayne Trace is a little bit tentative, mate. The, the, the passes are getting deflected. They've thrown a couple balls out of bounds. Tanner Lockoff finds it wide open. Stoller down low. Stoller did a nice job of waiting, making sure Steve was underneath him, got that one in for two. And when your best player is also a great screener, it's, it gets people open. Second chance opportunity for the Tornadoes here. Here's Rogal. Gets rid of it. Garcia sends a three-point shot. That one's off the side of the rim. Rebound comes down to the Raiders. But it is taken away by Beeston, and he gets that one up for two. He's got four points in the last minute, Nate. Two free throws and a layup, and that's how you get going. Tanner Lockoff tries to kick it out to Winans. Ends up loose on the floor. Brooks Lockoff just kind of tips it over to Stoller, who gathers it in. Davis with the three-point shot, no good. And this one's going to go out of bounds. At last touch by Braden Rogow. What I was mentioning before, Nate, if your best player is your best screener, you can't help off him, so it allows someone to get open. And he set a great back screen in the last possession to get Stoller open the block. And people don't see that very much, but if you watch that on film, it's, it's impressive when your best player becomes your best screener. Gail Winans with the inbounds, gets it over to Stoller. Three-point shot by Brooks Lockoff. Looks like that one might have been tipped as Braden Rogau had come out on the defense. Ends up out of bounds. And, and 6-4 coming out to guard that. that. That created problems there, and he got there late, but he got there, and he got, got a little tip off that. Brooks Lockoff, 18 points for the Raiders as they are still tied here with the Tornadoes all at 37. With the balance right now, Tip of Columbia, they've got you know, 9, 8, 7, 6, and that's been huge in this game, and points off the bench as well. Rogal, nice back door along the baseline as Brady Gooding can't get it to go in, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw. And that's another thing. That was a great coaching move there. They screened the high, high guy on the, uh, on the triangle of two, which there's no help there, and they did a back cut and got to the free throw line again. So they've really shored up some issues here in the third quarter. Tyler Davis has whistled for that foul. It's his first, team's second of the half. As good as first free throw is good. See, he did a nice job running the baseline on a replay that time, but a whole host of greater defenders were there. And Gooding's got seven points off the bench for them. He's been huge. He had a couple threes, now a couple free throws here, and he's been a big part of their game tonight. Gooding able to connect on both free throws, puts the team up two. We're going to have another foul. This one is going to go on Beeston. Logan Beeston picks up his second. That is also the team's second of the half. Both of these coaching staffs are experienced. They do a really good job of their team. I've been impressed with Coach Ken tonight. This is patience because he's been really good about being patient with his team. Brady Miller was getting pressured by Shawberry that time. Ends up on the floor. We're going to have a quick timeout as Coach Linder did not want to lose that possession. As you can see on our instant replay, got a little tied up, lost his footing, and called that timeout <laughs> prior to hitting the floor. Fortunate for Wayne Trace, it looked like they were heading for another turnover. And they are trying to get this one even again. And they find themselves down to 39-37. Yeah, I think Coach Ken and, and the referee was talking about dinner plans tonight after the game on that. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I think he thought it should have been a jump ball versus a timeout, but again, um, this has been a, a really well-played game overall. A lot of strategy involved by both teams. And, and we'll see what kind of action Wayne Trace runs out of this. Um, Tiffin Club has been all man-to-man -man, uh, with some, some run and jump. Uh, Wayne Trace has mixed it up with, with three different defenses tonight. So it's going to be a chess match this last ten minutes of the game. You know, they've done a nice adjustment on Brooks Lockoff, too, as we saw him get hot in the first half. But here in the second, just one ba made basket, two points. 
They've turned it a few times. Other guys have had wide-open shots they haven't made. Stoller is starting to contribute a little bit more, too, as well. That helps. Here, Stoller gets it over to Lockoff. 2.30 left to go here in the quarter. Lockoff. Beat Stoller down low, looking for an outlet. Finds Davis. Davis with the right hand, no good. But Stoller comes through. That's going to tip it out of bounds. Last touch by him. And so the basketball is going to go back to the Tornadoes. And when you're struggling offensively, that was a great play. They ran a flare screen for Lockoff, and they all ran that way, and they slipped the guy, and he just missed the layup. And, and those are the kind of plays you have to make, you know, to, to, be, uh, to win a game that's going to be a you know, one-possession, two-possession game at the end. Garcia brings it up, drops it off to... Gooding, and Gooding going to try to run through. Leaves Garcia with the one-on-one, -on -one. can't make the three-pointer go. Nice save by Rogal, though. This one ends up tipped, but ends up into the hands of Rogal. As Bryce Rogal able to make the three-point shot, and now Colombian back out to the five-point lead. They've really caught fire from three. That's three here recent. Lock off, pull up jumper. That one's going to be off. Davis with the rebound. Decides to pull it back out. Lock off, working against Gooding. Goes with the left hand. Spins back in the lane. Shot up. No good. One more time, though. Lock off, three point shot. That one's no good. As you see, Wayne Trace has done an excellent job on the offensive boards tonight, giving themselves second, third, and even sometimes a fourth opportunity. Yeah, they had, they had three offensive rebounds there, and their best player got three really good looks, and they're all a little short. So you, a Friday night game, Saturday afternoon game, legs starting to go a little bit. I think we're starting to see that a little bit for Wayne Trace. Stoller, he's going to pull up. Can't get that one to go. Rebound finally comes down to the Tornadoes. Garcia drops it back off. Now Rogal is going to reset. Long pass. Here's Shawberry, and he connects for three. Shawberry has his second three-pointer of the night. And Columbia now out to their largest lead as they are on top, 8, 45, at 37. And Wayne Trace would have to get out of the triangle, too, because uh, right now it's not, it's not working, and the balance of Columbia is really coming out right now. Stoller working up towards the top of the key, gets it off the lockoff. He's going to try to drive as it ripped away. This one's going to be out of bounds as it looks like Tyler Davis is just trying to fight for that one. Roll along that end line. So another turnover. Ball's going to go back to Columbia. And Columbia was able to sneak Beast in about a minute and a half break there, which is going to be huge the last, you know, eight minutes plus of this game. And he's had two rests this game where Lockoff uh, and Stoller hasn't really sat yet. They're, they're going to try to give Lockoff here about a half minute break. 38.8 seconds left to go here in the third. As Tiffin Columbian is on top, 45-37. Isaac Garcia brings it up for the Tornadoes. Brady Miller has checked into the game for the Raiders. He's going to guard it. They're straight man-to-man -man now, Nate. They've, they've gone to, to straight man-to-man -man because their role players are shooting well. Miller continues with the pressure against Garcia. Garcia trying to go to the right, looks to the left, He's up around midcourt. Finally gets rid of it. Ten seconds to go. Here's Beeston. Hudson Meyer draws the challenge of trying to see if they can't keep him from the shot. Long three-pointer. That one's going to be really short. Garcia comes up with it. And Shawberry not able to get rid of it before the quarter comes to an end. So after three, Tiffin Columbian on top. 45-37. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Looking for that perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan? WOSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for only a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wosn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. Fourth quarter underway here at Ottawa Glandorf. As the Wayne Trace Raiders are trying to see if they can't close this gap. Lockoff's three-point shot's off, but Myers gets the offensive rebound. Lockoff, second opportunity. This time he cashes in. He needed that to go. His last four shots were short, and he just needed something to get going again, and that was a big basket. Offensive rebound by Myers there. It was only a seven-point quarter for Wayne Trace as the offense really sputtered. Beeston finds Garcia. Garcia down into the corner to Shawberry. 
He decides against taking a three-point shot, but Brady Gooding, he's going to take one long rebound. Fight for the loose ball. Ends up into the hands of Beeston. Beeston shoots the three-point shot. No good. Davis with the rebound. Both the best players are short right now in their jump shots, and that's legs from a Friday night game to a Saturday afternoon game. Tanner Lockoff going to take the three-point try. No good. Stoller with the rebound. Stoller had Beeston on him. Looked like he was a little bit out of position. Did a nice job of trying to get back underneath the basket and forcing that whistle. And the way Wayne Trace is saying this game right now is offensive rebounds. They're not shooting it very well, and they've got offensive rebounds. And so Stoller will make his second trip to the free throw line tonight. Able to connect his third. He's three for three. Both teams have three timeouts. The fouls aren't a factor right now for one and one. So, again, a one-two possession game the whole way through here. We're going to see which team executes better to finish. Stoller second shot up. This one's going to be off. Rebound comes down to Shawberry. And the storyline of this game right now, Nate, if it ended right now, would be the balance of Tiffin Columbia. And we have 8 8, 7 12 7 across the line. That's been huge for this game. Garcia drops it over to Rogau. Rogau finds a cutting Beeston, but Stoller did a nice job poking that one away. Beeston trying to find Rogau down low, but Davis able to take it away. Wayne Trace the scrappy hands again, got the turnover. Kyle Stoller now, he goes with the drive, drops it off to Lockoff. Lockoff, pull up jumper, and it's good. Brooks Lockoff trying to get hot here in the fourth. Can't underestimate that shot he hit inside off the offensive rebound. Got him going a little bit. And he, and here's his chance right now to, to really carry them home. Back to a one possession game. Beeston, fall away, jumper, good. He hit that one with ease. And, and he finally used his size advantage over Myers there. And that's, that's just the mismatch size-wise, not competitive-wise, but size-wise it is. Back out to a five-point lead. Lock off up near the top of the key. Gets it over to Davis. He goes baseline, floater, good. Really nice runner there by Davis, and they need other players to contribute besides Stoller and Lockoff here to finish. Shawberry hands it off to Garcia, who's going to pull it back out. Shawberry kicks it over Gooding. Gooding, he's going to drive. Gets all the way in. Nice, tough layup by Brady Gooding. And Nate, he averages six a game, and he's got ten. And I think his end of the half and that third quarter and, and now into the fourth, he's been a huge key. He's guarding the best player right now. He's done all the little things tonight to help his team get a five-point lead. All right, now the offense is just trading baskets as the defenses haven't been able to come up with a stop. Tanner Lockoff. It's it to He's got it over to Stoller. Stoller trying to call for it down low, but Brooks Lockoff comes around. Kyle Stoller, as he was trying to work into that paint, was able to seal off the defense, and Brooks Lockoff comes in for the layup. He's up to 24 now, and really, he's had six points here in the first four and a half minutes of this uh, fourth quarter. Brooks Lockoff trying to will his team to stay in this one. Garcia gets rid of it. Rogal found about the three-pointer for a second, but gets it over to Garcia. Brady Gooding gets it around the free throw line, cuts in and able to get that one to go down. Gooding has 12, Shawbury has 12. They average about 12 between them. They have double that tonight. That's that's the storyline. We're going to have a timeout. This one is going to be by the Raiders. They're going to take the full timeout. We'll step aside as well. Wayne Trace trying to get back in this one. They're down five. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard presented by Lakefeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. 4-13 left to go in the game. 51-46. The Tornado's on top of Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace going to take the basketball out underneath their basket. It's Brooks Lockoff, 24 points, leads all scorers. He's going to get a screen here, I think, to either the ball side or back side. Davis found himself wide open down in the corner, trying to call for it. Wayne Trace missed it as Winans brings it back up top. 2-3 match by Tiffin Club in the first time zone all night. Winans trying to do something with the basketball, gets it over to Davis. Now here's Lockoff. We've seen him pull up from that area of the floor. He likes those corners. 
And here's Tyler Davis, mid-range jumper, no good. Rebound comes down to Beeston. He pushes it up to Gooding. Gooding has this one swatted away, ends up out of bounds. We're going to have a foul as Brady Goodings is going to make another trip to the free throw line. And Beeston's head's always up, and he made a bullet pass to Gooding there. And again, two more free throws. You can watch that right here on the spin move. Got fouled. Tyler Davis picks up the foul. It's his second team's third. Both teams have still played a relatively clean game here tonight. Brady Gooding's shot is good. He's now three for three from the line. Both teams only have three fouls, so we got a long way to go here with, without bonus and to be aggressive and, and still not shoot free throws on the floor. Good in second free throw, he leaves short. Stoller comes up with the easy rebound. In that Friday night and Saturday afternoon game, you start to see a lot of things go short now, Nate. Still just a two possession game. It's Tyler Davis with the basketball. Wayne Trace works it around the perimeter. Lockoff pulls up for three. This one's good. Way too much space for a guy that can shoot like that. That's, he's up to 25, and they found him on quick ball reversal. Nine points here in the fourth. Brooks lock off. Here's Beeston. Beeston rattles home a three. Big answer by Logan Beeston. Huge shot, and both players are showing their skill level right now, and it's impressive. Here's Stoller down low, spins left hand off the glass, and good. They went back to man-to-man -to -man there, and Stoller did a nice job of ducking in, using his left hand over his right shoulder. Nice move. Four-point game. Columbian still on top. 2.45 left to go. Wayne Trace needs a stop. Garcia works around the screen. And he was trying to feed Rogal down low, but Wayne Trace able to take it away. Lock off. Someone else is going to be open this last two and a half minutes. Can someone else hit a shot? The, the big two have 39. Can someone else hit one? Here's Lockoff. Worked through the screen, and he connects on that three-point shot. Or maybe they don't need anybody else to hit one because he's that good tonight. He's got 30. 55-54. Brooks Lockoff has single-handedly almost erased this lead as it is a one-point game with 2.05 left to go. And I think they're content to hold it right here, Nate. Wayne Trace has got a foul. Uh, four times to get the bonus. And I think without a shot, this is an old shot clock discussion, but they're ahead. There's no reason for them to attack. It's Wayne Trace's job to go get them. Here's Gooding. Double team coming. Gives it off to Garcia. He's going to run baseline. Taken away by Lockoff. Brooks Lockoff has a chance to give his team the lead. Winans gets it over. Davis now. Here's Lockoff. Lockoff's going to move to his right. I look for a Coach Linder to call a timeout here. That's exactly what he does as Coach Linder wants to talk about it. A minute 25 left to go. They're going to take the full timeout, see if they can't draw up something. I think we all know where the basketball's going to go. We'll step aside and return. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. Take a look at the upcoming schedules. First for the Toledo Columbian Tornadoes. We'll play Vermillion and then Finley and Clyde. A couple of conference games mixed in there here as we come towards the end of the season. For Wayne Trace, conference game against the newest member of the GMC, Paulding right now, undefeated in conference play. And they also have Shawnee and Autoville coming to town. So that timeout, that was great to watch. Coach Linder's son was tapping him on the butt and all other kind of things. He urged his dad to call a timeout. He called it. Here comes the, the, the screen, back screen's gonna come here. Nope, they ran right in their set. Lockoff with the basketball, he's had the hot hand. One point game, 115 left to go. Gonna try to clear out, Lockoff goes to his right. And we're gonna have a foul, and they're gonna get Isaac Garcia as he was battling down low with Kyle Stoller. That was great action. They set a back screen by Lockoff to try to get the lob but it created a switch, big on small, and then they had to foul him inside. A great foul because that's only four for Columbia. Winans can trigger the inbound. Gets it out to Stoller. Now Tanner Lockoff brings it back around as Wayne Trace sets their offense. Lockoff spins to his right, goes baseline. Hesitation has it blocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Raiders. And that's where size came over there, and Beeston had a great block, and we're down to a minute, and 
We're not close to the bonus. There's going to be a lot of things happen here uh, the last minute. Wayne Trace is down to one timeout. Brooks one more time with the basketball. Drops it off to Davis. They just continue to move around the perimeter. Brooks lock off with the drive off the glass and gets it in with the floater. Didn't need the glass's help. And the whole time his shoulders were squared, Nate, and that's what great players do. He got hit, kept his shoulders squared, and we're down. Here we go. Wayne Trace can foul here and not create any problems by, by doing that. Brooks lock off 14 points as we have our first foul. 14 points here in the fourth quarter, 32 points on the game. Brooks Lockoff has done a lot of heavy lifting here tonight for the Raiders. Incredible, and that was a great coaching staff decision by Wayne Trace. They're yelling foul. They know the time and score. That's what great assistants do, and they're all up uh, helping them. And they got two more to give here. Uh, they'll take the ball to bounce probably three more times here to get, to get this roll, but Wayne Trace will let it go and foul again. And then they forced the long pass into the backcourt, eat up a about eight more seconds. Stoller out up against Beeston. Don't want to let him go. Thought about that long three-pointer, but decided against it. 13 seconds left to go. We'll see if they choose the foul, and they do. Somehow that one goes in as Beeston makes it, trying to call for it, but it's going to be a foul on the floor. And, and Tiff and Columbia has three timeouts. I'm surprised they're not calling one right now. I'm really surprised they're not calling a timeout because Wayne Trace is going to foul again. They got one more to give. And the ball goes to the back. There's not going to be much time left. Gooding looking for somewhere to go with it. They do try to go inside. Wayne Trace doesn't foul. Wide open, Gooding. Gooding to the basket, and it's good. And one opportunity as they take the lead with 3.2 seconds left to go. Yeah, and we got to remember it's high school kids, and that's what happened right now. They, they over pursued because they were trying to foul and gave up. In my opinion, the player of the game, Goody, uh, just finished on an and one. And, and now it, it's flipped, Nate. Now they can foul, uh, and, and Wayne Trace is not in the bonus because they only have 14 fouls. So a lot of things here can happen. Last 3.2. 57 56. Brady Gooding heading to the free throw line. And we're going to have a timeout on the, flow, uh, on the floor as we take another look at it on our instant replay. Gooding just had a wide open lane and doesn't hesitate at all. Stoller late coming over, can't get his hand on it, got too much of the body. Now Brady Gooding has a chance to make this a two point game. Take a look at the upcoming schedule on WOSN. On a Sunday, Liberty Benton, Fort Laramie girls, another fantastic game. And then Crestview St. John's, and then the 100th anniversary game. I know one that you'll be sitting on the couch watching, Mr. Bagley, Van Wert, St. Henry. Well, I may try to make it there. I could leave from here and make it there. The game won't start till about 10 because 100 years of the anniversary at St. Henry, there's a lot of good basketball. You know, fortunately, a couple of those banners up there have won. <laughs> Both those ones, great teams, are Van Wert losses. So. It's always a fun night in St. Henry. Those people are awesome down there. They treat you great. And that'll be a fun night in St. Henry tonight. And then next week on WSN, more games as Fort Lormie, Mary Local Girls, another excellent game. Our selection show we talked about earlier, that's Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. And then Pandora, Upper Scioto Valley, both teams having excellent seasons again. That'll be at 10 o'clock Wednesday night. And we'll see what happens here, what Tiffin Club will do. They've got three timeouts. Wayne Trace, no timeouts. Um, well, they foul um, because there's only 14 fouls on them. Well, we missed it on purpose here uh, to not give them a chance. Gooding's shot is good. So Wayne Trace with the chance on the inbound. Davis going to have to hurry. Three gets it over. Shot is up and no good. Colum Tiffin Columbian chooses not to foul as Wayne Trace does have an opportunity at the buzzer but not able to get it in. The Tornadoes come away with the victory. We'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court where the Tiffin Columbian Tornadoes have knocked off the Wayne Trace Raiders at the OG Winter Classic. Nate Garlock alongside Mark Bagley. And Mark, it was a good game. I mean, we talked about, you know, uh, in the pregame what we kind of thought was going to have to happen by both sides. and We knew that we, they had elite scorers, and Brooks Lockoff definitely held to that. Uh, Beeston did not kind of have the game that we thought he might have, but 
you know, they were still able to find a way and come away with the victory. Yeah, the balance of Tiffin Columbia tonight was incredible. They had a great balance off the bench from Gooding, who had, I think, 14. And then uh, Shawbury, I think, had 12 as well. So they had a great team uh, effort tonight to, to win that game right at the end. And, but I, I think, without question, the Stolly Hustle Player of the World uh, winner award tonight was Brooks Lockoff. Yeah, tonight's Stolly, Stolly Hustle Award winner. Very deserving. And check out all the highlights from tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on WOSN's YouTube page. Brooks Lockoff, 32 points, did everything he could to keep his team um, in this one. Not able to get his hands on the basketball, though, prior to that final buzzer as Wayne Trace is going to fall just a little bit short tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting different things that happened at the end, but but Columbia elected not to call a timeout or foul, and then and then uh, it was a desperation three by Wayne Trace at the buzzer. But uh, it was an excellent basketball game. Not a lot of fouls, not a lot of turnovers, and really good individual skill and team skill level. So congratulations to Brooke Lockhoff, tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. I'd like to thank tonight's crew working in the truck. Ben and Megan doing an excellent job, as always. Our camera people, Cassidy, Caitlin, Clay, Lexi, we appreciate everything you guys do, making this much easier for us. We get to do the easy part. We just sit up here and talk. they got to do all the technical stuff for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. It's great crew here. Love uh, all the people at TV44. Just do a great job of promoting high school athletics and, and our kids and coaches. So that is going to wrap it up for us here at Game 2 of the OG Winter Classic. We still have Game 3 and 4 to come. We'll be broadcasting both of those for you here on WOSN, so make sure you check those out. One final time, the Wayne Trace Raiders fall just short as they are knocked off by the Tiffin Columbian Tornadoes. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.